The only way to save a city is to destroy it. That is a common theme in urban warfare. And if you like military strategy tactics and doctrine, and seeing it applied to real-time strategy games, this is definitely the channel for you. So make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you think of this new series. So we're going to go through time. We're going back to World War I, and we're going to talk about the killing fields that would take place during major engagements. Since the war was static, and it was mostly positional, you'd have vast fields of trenches and attrition warfare. And the common theme was... Whoever had the most units, the most artillery, often won the battle or the engagements. It led to countless lives lost and endless bloodletting. And that's our example we're going to use right now. Our two platoons need to cross this field. They do have tank support, but they are not available at this moment in time. We're using common World War I tactics. The enemy is in a defensive position forward of the key objective. So what you're going to see is our units get in contact with these with the enemy and be brought to a complete halt and the battle is going to turn into nothing but bloodletting and bloodshed. No one's going to make progress or process in securing this village. War is often fought over both resources and tactical positions. So, that's what we're doing now, as we describe this engagement. Our troops are going to move into position, and they're going to become pinned down by heavy machine gun fire from the Germans or in the Rus from the Germans. Actually, from the Russians, both platoons aren't going to make any ground. We've, at this point, identified the small trench line where most of the fire is going to be coming from. So remember. One of the key aspects to offensive and defensive warfare or def or and urban combat is the defender is generally weaker. So that's why they fall back to these positions. All right. They're heavily fortified and our troops need to cross this vast field. Generally, if you were going to attack someone, you're going to have a much stronger force because you're not going to launch an assault with a weaker force on a stronger enemy. That's why you dig trench lines, and that's why you reinforce buildings. Mortars play a big part, and s same with heavy artillery to drive units and the enemy out of their fortifications. But like I said in the beginning, remember, to destroy the village, we must save it. To, to save the village, we must destroy it. Right now we have two equal forces and we're continuing to assault. And I left the link down in the description for this website. So as you can see, our front lines come to a complete halt and we're losing vital resources. Our commanders are dying, we're out of smoke grenades. And this was a common theme in World War I. Before Russian deep battle, before maneuver warfare, it was attrition and positional combat. Trench lines, heavy artillery, and just fight until the bitter end. You fight forward of key objectives to keep the enemy out. Now. We enter a, a more modern air. Tanks. As tanks became dominant on the battlefield, they were able to drive infantry out of their positions much more effectively. Same with the introduction of aircraft and heavier weapons. Units no longer had to rely on the static form of combat where it was bloodshed and just countless lives lost. 
endless artillery and defensive positions. Remember the Battle, battle of Passchendaele? How many tons of artillery was dropped on that town? On a, They completely obliterated the village. Or you can think of the chosen, frozen Chosen Valley. Millions, hundreds of thousands of shells and artillery just dropped on enemy defensive positions in order to drive them out. We're making no progress. We have a substantially larger force. We have smoke. If we go and we check on the Russians, we can see they are slowly getting pushed out of their defensive positions, but that's coming at a cost to our units. Our units are also getting counter artillery. That's slowing us down even more. Our tanks are about to crest the hill, and we're going to see a shift and a change in the battle. And this was the common theme. Is that the defender has the advantage, and that the attacker needs to bring more forces. They need to bring heavier firepower. They need to bring more units, and they're going to suffer possibly more casualties. Once these tanks crest the hill, we're going to see a, see a dramatic shift in battle. No longer will our forces have to fight across this killing field. No longer will they be subjected to harassing machine gun fire. They can... And we can see it now. With the advent of tanks, heavier weapons, and mobile artillery pieces, we're forcing these units out of their position and into the village, which brings us to our next point. Time to destroy the village. Common urban warfare tactics misconceptions are that it's posi it, that it's maneuver warfare that is where the problems slowly begin urban warfare needs to change from a more maneuver centric concept to a positional concept you don't have one large force inside the town you have many small engagements and many small battles That means you have streets that need to be crossed, one of the deadliest areas of all urban combat. You have buildings that need to be penetrated, walls that need to be destroyed, enemies in tunnels, enemies in roofs, enemies in basements, all over this town. Building to building, street to street reinforced bunker and house to reinforce bunker and house one mistake games make with urban combat is it lacks tunnels they lack covers for windows and they lack bridges between buildings they are all very sterile and just what a town would look like if it wasn't bracing for combat. As you can see, this forward position has now virtually been driven back just by these four tanks. One, two, three, four, five have turned the tide of this war very easily. 
Our troops were in combat for almost 20, 30, 40 minutes. They lost commanders, they lost friends, and they lost brothers. These tanks have taken us from a positional attrition style combat and dramatically shifted us and brought us into the modern air. Killing fields are now obsolete and it's now time to enter urban combat and urban warfare. Reinforced bunkers, the fortress of Stalingrad, air power all change how forces do combat. They change the dynamic of warfare and they change how we do battle with each other. Five tanks destroyed three platoons of Russian soldiers in a fortified and defended position. Our German troops were stalled and killed and this is a perfect example of how weapon systems have changed combat for the better and continue to save lives on the battlefield as well as take them in more efficient manner in a more efficient manner.